Sino-Tibetan includes over 400 languages spoken by 1.4 billion people, second only to Indo-European. It divides into Sinitic, including Mandarin, Cantonese, and Wu, and Tibeto-Burman, covering Tibetan and Burmese. Written Chinese, dating back over 3,000 years, is among the world's oldest continuous scripts. Burmese adopted its own script in the 11th century, while Tibetan preserved vast Buddhist literature. Scholars debate the family's original homeland, with hypotheses ranging from northern China to the Himalayan foothills. Indo-Aryan, a branch of the Indo-European family, dominates South Asia, spoken by nearly a billion people. Major languages include Hindi, Bengali, Urdu, Punjabi, and Marathi. Its roots lie in Sanskrit, an ancient liturgical and literary language foundational to Hindu texts like the Vedas. Prakrits, spoken vernaculars, evolved into medieval languages such as Pali, which preserved Buddhist scriptures. Written traditions span scripts like Devanagari, Bengali, and Nastalik. It remains one of history's most diverse linguistic branches. Iranian, also part of the Indo-European family, stretches from the Middle East to Central Asia. Languages include Persian, Farsi, Pashto, Kurdish, and Baloki. Ancient Iranian tongues like Avestan preserved Zoroastrian scriptures, while Old Persian inscriptions, such as those at Persepolis, documented the Achaemenid Empire. Middle Persian, or Pahlavi, later flourished under the Sasanian dynasty. Modern Persian, with its Arabic-influenced script, remains culturally vital. Iranian languages show wide dialectal variation, and some, like Sogdian and Scythian, once dominated Silk Road trade before falling into extinction. Turkic covers over 35 languages across Central Asia, Anatolia, and Siberia. Major examples include Turkish, Uzbek, Kazakh, and Uyghur. Proto-Turkic is believed to have emerged near Mongolia around the first millennium BCE. Old Turkic inscriptions, like the Orkhon inscriptions, 8th century CE, provide the earliest records. The expansion of Turkic peoples shaped the linguistic landscape from the Caspian Sea to China's Xinjiang. Many Turkic languages are mutually intelligible, though political borders created divergence. They share features such as vowel harmony and agglutinative grammar. Slavic belongs to the Indo-European family and are typically divided into East, West, and South branches. In Asia, the most prominent Slavic presence is Russian, which spread eastward through Siberia and Central Asia during the Tsarist and Soviet eras. Russian became a lingua franca across much of Northern Asia, used in administration, education, and interethnic communication. Even today, it remains an official language in several post-Soviet states and is widely spoken across Central Asia. Dravidian, native to South India and parts of Sri Lanka, includes Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, and Malayalam. Tamil boasts the oldest continuous literary tradition in South Asia, with Sangam poetry dating back over 2,000 years. Unlike Indo-Aryan, Dravidian is a linguistic isolate, though contact with Sanskrit enriched its lexicon. Telugu in Canada developed rich medieval literatures, while Malayalam diverged more recently from Tamil. The family also includes smaller tribal languages, many endangered. Dravidian speakers influenced the Indus Valley civilization, as some scholars argue linguistic traces survive in its undeciphered script. Austronesian spans from Madagascar to Easter Island, with over 1,200 languages. Major ones include Malay-Indonesian, Tagalog, and Javanese. Proto-Austronesian likely originated in Taiwan around 3000 BCE, from where seafaring people spread across the Pacific and Indian Oceans. Austronesians were skilled navigators, using stars and ocean currents to explore vast distances. The family includes Polynesian languages such as Hawaiian and Maori and Malagasy in Madagascar. Austronesian tongues share common word roots and agglutinative grammar. Many smaller island languages face endangerment due to globalization and language shift. Koreanic, represented mainly by Korean and its dialects, including Jeju, sometimes considered a separate language. Its classification is debated with proposed links to Altaic or Japonic, though many linguists treat it as an isolate. Hangul, the Korean alphabet invented in the 15th century by King Sejong, is among the most scientific writing systems. Earlier, Koreans used classical Chinese characters, adapted into systems like Hanja. Archaeological and historical evidence ties the language to ancient kingdoms such as Goguryeo and Silla, though continuity remains disputed. Japonic includes Japanese and the Ryukyuan languages spoken in Okinawa and surrounding islands. Japanese has an extensive literary history dating to the 8th century, with texts like the Kojiki and Nihon Shoki. Old Japanese reveals Chinese influence through borrowed vocabulary and writing systems. The Ryukyuan languages, once dominant in the Ryukyu kingdom, are now critically endangered, with younger generations shifting to standard Japanese. Linguists debate Japonic's deeper affiliations, sometimes linking it to Koreanic or Altaic, but consensus is lacking. Semitic, a branch of the Afro-Asiatic family, includes Arabic, Hebrew, and Aramaic. It originated in the Middle East, with Akkadian once spoken in Mesopotamia. 
classical Arabic became central through the Quran in the 7th century, spreading widely with Islam. Hebrew, once a liturgical language, was revived as a spoken tongue in the 19th century and now serves as Israel's official language. Aramaic, once the lingua franca of empires like the Achaemenid, survives in small communities. Kradai, primarily found in Southeast Asia, includes Thai, Lao, and Zhuang. Its homeland is believed to be southern China, with migration spreading speakers into present-day Thailand and Laos. Thai developed its own script in the 13th century under King Ramkam Hayeng, influenced by Old Khmer writing. Zhuang, spoken in China's Guangxi province, is the largest minority language in China. Kradai languages often show heavy borrowing from Chinese and Indic sources due to centuries of cultural contact. Austroasiatic family includes Vietnamese, Khmer, and numerous minority languages across mainland Southeast Asia and India. Vietnamese and Khmer are the only two with large national status. Vietnamese adopted heavy Chinese influence, both linguistically and in script, before switching to a Latin-based system under colonial rule. Khmer developed its own script in the Angkor period, derived from Brahmi. Many smaller Austroasiatic languages like Mon and Kasi retain archaic features and play crucial roles in local traditions. Uralic includes languages like Finnish, Estonian, and Hungarian in Europe, but its deepest roots stretch into Asia. Branches such as Samoyedic, Kanti, and Mansi are spoken across Western Siberia, especially in Russia's Ural and Arctic regions. The Uralic languages are believed to have originated in the region around the Ural Mountains, with early speakers spreading both westward into Europe and eastward into Siberia. While small in number compared to their European counterparts, Uralic languages in Asia preserve ancient traditions and reflect early interactions between steppe and forest peoples. These languages are tied to nomadic reindeer herding, fishing, and hunting cultures. Mongolic includes Mongolian, Buryat, and Kalmyk. Classical Mongolian became prominent under the Mongol Empire in the 13th century, serving as an administrative language across Eurasia. Written Mongolian, adapted from the Uyghur script, remains in use in Inner Mongolia, while Cyrillic is standard in Mongolia since the 20th century. Mongolic languages share vowel harmony and agglutinative grammar. Historically, they absorbed loanwords from Tibetan, Chinese, and Turkic neighbors. Several smaller Mongolic languages face decline, with Mongolian itself evolving rapidly between rural dialects and urbanized speech. Tungusic, now critically endangered, once spread across Siberia, Manchuria, and northern China. Its most famous member, Manchu, served as the official language of the Qing Dynasty, 1644 to 1912. Today, Manchu has only a handful of native speakers, though efforts exist for revival. Avenki and other Tungusic languages survive among scattered Siberian groups. Tungusic languages are agglutinative and share features with Mongolic and Turkic, prompting hypotheses of an Altaic macro family. Historical Tungusic speakers influenced East Asian politics, particularly during the rise of the Manchu Qing Empire. The Hmong Mien, centered in southern China and Southeast Asia, includes Hmong and Mien languages. Historically marginalized, these groups migrated into Vietnam, Laos, and Thailand, especially during the 18th and 19th centuries. During the 20th century, many Hmong communities were caught in Cold War conflicts, notably in Laos. Hmong and Mien languages are tonal, with complex syllable structures. Scripts for these languages were often invented recently, such as the Pahao Hmong script in the 20th century. Oral traditions remain vital in preserving cultural heritage. Caucasian, languages spoken in the Caucasus region, are often divided into three families. Northwest Circassian languages, Northeast languages such as Chechen and Aver, and South Caucasian represented by Georgian. They are renowned for complex consonant systems and extensive case marking. Georgian, with a literary tradition dating back to the 5th century, uses its unique alphabet. Chechen and related languages survive centuries of resistance against external empires. The Caucasus remains one of the world's most linguistically diverse regions. Many of its languages face endangerment due to assimilation pressures, 